our future. And I want to make quite sure that I will not be misunderstood. I am not using this occasion as a platform for putting forward ideas other than those which I hope will help to bring unity, prosperity and happiness to South Africa. I see our republic, the republic of the English and the Afrikaans speaking alike. <laughs> governing what is the heritage of white South Africa. Joined together as one by the very past set them at this time. Through this unity, cooperating in solving its special problem of race relations, so totally different from problems anywhere else in the world. Te midden van een treurende volk, het het mij roepen geworden om die plichten als eerste minister van de Unie van Zuid-Afrika op mij te nemen. Een geliefde en bekwame voorganger het niet tuig in gegaan. Zij taak moet ander nou verder voeren. Het is mij vaste voornemen om zijn voetsporen en ook die van zijn geëerde voorganger te druk. Die doelstellings waarop hulle handelingen gericht was, is ook mijn doelstellings. Want dit is die koers waar die kiezers van Zuid-Afrika ons opgedraaid om te volgen. Als gelovige regeerders van een godsdienstige land, moeten ze beklemd doen dat ons ons kracht en leiding in de toekomst, zoals in die verleden, zal zoeken bij hom wat die lotgevallen van nazi's beheer. Goede samenwerking tussen eenes denkendes ter bereiking van die gezamenlijke idealen op staatkundige gebied is noodzakelijk en gelukkig weer eens verzekerd. Die kracht wat van hier die eenheid uitgaan moet blijvende waarde hebben. Tezelfde tijd zal anders denken dat ze recht om uit te geven aan hun oortuigings steeds beschermd worden. En die regeling van verhoudings tussen de Unie en staten en gebieden van Afrika zal alle leiders als verstandige en verantwoordelijke mensen beseffen dat er groot verschillen tussen hulle landen bestaan. Onder meer wat ras en levenswijze betreft. Dit zal die regering zijn streven wees om middels tot samenwerking te vinden wat rekening zal houden met die omstandigheden en moeilijkheden van die verschillende gebieden. Our policy is one which is called by an Afrikaans word apartheid. And I'm afraid that has been misunderstood so often. It could just as easily and perhaps much better be described as a policy of good neighborliness. Accepting that there are differences between people. But while these differences exist and you have to acknowledge them, at the same time, you can live together, aid one another, but that it can best be done when you act as good neighbors always do. South Africa has made the expected choice to be a republic. Indeed, despite lively opposition, especially in Johannesburg, it was the inevitable choice. So thoroughly did the government of Dr. Fairford organize the campaign while allowing only white people to vote in the referendum. Fairford declared before polling day that if he only had a majority of one, the union would become a republic. Women polled in strength while the men were at work. By no means did Dr. Fairford have it all his own way. For days in Joburg and all places of pro-British leaning, the opposition was strong. So the Villiers Graf vigorously fought the Republican idea. He has opposed the Premier in Parliament. Now he stumped the country with great success wherever the majority were of British blood. But nothing less than a Republic would satisfy the Dutch descended Afrikaners who bitterly resent the defeat of their forebears, the Boers. This year, the Rant Easter Show at Johannesburg, at which many nations were exhibiting, was on a larger scale than usual. It marked the 50th year of the Union of South Africa. The Prime Minister, Dr. Favort, was making his first public appearance since the state of emergency had been declared. 
We are prepared to cooperate with every state in the world, white or black. It was after his speech that the attempt on his life was made. Dr. Favot falls shot in the face at point-blank range. All around him are stunned. His wife's there trying to help. Somebody hurls the first thing to hand at the assailant, whose name is later given as David Pratt. The stricken man, bleeding profusely, is gravely hurt, as news of the shocking event goes out to the world. The Republic is the only sure and stable friend that the Western nations have in Africa. We are here to stay, and we are here to aid all others in whatever they may need and can get from us. We have, for a very long time, developed in South Africa a nation of our own, friendly, prosperous, progressive. We hope that the rest of Africa will become likewise. Fortunately, even former opponents of the Republic, those who were in favor of a monarchy, are now prepared to give it full loyalty and cooperation. We are very happy to be a united people. Of course, there has been sensational journalism and conditioned reporting, which created the impression that there would be great difficulties ahead of us. Well, goodbye to you all. All that I can say is, our opponents who wanted us out of the Commonwealth have won their wish, but they've lost their cause. Well, goodbye to you all. All that I can say is, our opponents who wanted us out of the Commonwealth have won their wish, but they've lost their cause. I must give them broadcasting house a cue just so that they can right, stand by. Yes. Well, stand by um, control, stand by channel. For a statement by Dr. Valvort, we'll go ahead in approximately yes. 10 seconds yes. from now. Can you just move over the light, please? So thank you. Just over the light, thank you. Mm -hmm.
But it is not only the white man in South Africa who claims as an inalienable right that his nation must be permitted to survive and to retain its own distinctive identity, its own culture and institutions. The black man is equally intent upon safeguarding the national heritages of each of his different nations. The South African government has, in the light of all this, chosen the only alternative, namely the self-realization to the utmost extent possible for each group. Our policy is one which is called by an Afrikaans word apartheid. And I'm afraid that has been misunderstood so often. It could just as easily, and perhaps much better be described, as a policy of good neighborliness. Accepting that there are differences between people. But while these differences exist, and you have to acknowledge them, at the same time, you can live together, aid one another, but that it can best be done when you act as good neighbors always do. The Republic is the only sure and stable friend that the Western nations have in Africa. We are here to stay, and we are here to aid all others in whatever they may need and can get from us. We have, for a very long time, developed in South Africa a nation of our own, friendly, prosperous, progressive. We hope that the rest of Africa will become likewise. Fortunately, even former opponents of the Republic, those who were in favor of a monarchy, are now prepared to give it full loyalty and cooperation. We are very happy to be a united people. Of course, there has been sensational journalism and conditioned reporting, which created the impression that there would be great difficulties ahead of us. We have no doubt that all this will pass. Certain restricted measures had to be taken recently, mainly to ensure the protection of the masses of all races who seek peace and order. The record of stable government will continue in South Africa. Surely it must be a record. Six prime ministers and only five changes of government in 50 years. However, in the future, we will seek the same form of stability in government, in the Republic, which should ensure stability too in the economic life of the country. Not for us, the sudden constitutional upheavals which created dictatorships in certain parts of Africa, chaos in the Congo, and forms of multiracial government elsewhere which only create the desire for domination by one over the other, without any economic certainty developing. We seek the gradual development of each of our groups in a certain direction. Here the solution is sought by openly retaining the white man's guiding hand, which elsewhere is the hidden guarantee of industrial development and even good administration. Here we follow the example of the nation in creating separate chances of development for each of our racial groups. We seek to give the opportunity for cooperation in a novel way by the creation of a Commonwealth of Southern Africa as our ultimate aim. And in this Commonwealth, cooperation and consultation will be able to take place between all racial groups on the highest level. May this peace and prosperity and aid to all be made possible by the cooperation of our friends in the Western nations.
fateful date when South Africa becomes a republic and withdraws from the Commonwealth. Geoffrey Shirley reporting on the news which came as a great shock, though everyone knew that Commonwealth premiers meeting in London were at grips with Dr. Vervoort and his government's racial policy. There were attempts at compromise in this most uncompromising situation, but criticism of apartheid by many of the premiers was emphatic. Apartheid, it was said, was incompatible with membership of the Commonwealth. By the South African government, such criticism is regarded as interference in the country's domestic affairs. The discussions at Lancaster House found no solution, and the break came when Dr. Vervoort said, I wish formally to withdraw my request for South Africa to remain a member of the Commonwealth after she becomes a republic. It's a sad and fateful decision, but it's too soon to foretell its repercussions. Throughout this beautiful land, there's long been opposition to government policy. One example is the Black Sash demonstrations of protest which began six years ago. It's not only the descendants of British settlers, of whom there are large numbers, who form the opposition. Elections have been strongly contested with the racial policy featuring prominently, but the party in favour of apartheid won. The Voortrekkers Memorial, symbol of the fact that it's the Dutch or Boer element which opposes modification of policy. Here the Boers gather to celebrate past history, but do they see clearly into the future? The Dutch element outvotes the British and maintains the government in power. And some 10 million Africans in the population of nearly 13 have no say in the decision of May the 31st. Ladies and gentlemen, with humble gratitude to the Almighty, I now declare the Hendrik Verwoerd Dam, the first completed giant of the Orange River project, as well as the hydroelectric power station, officially open. On behalf of the government of the Republic of South Africa, I hand the dam over to the inhabitants of our country for its economic, efficient use and also for enjoyment. <laughs> nobody's corpse, we shall fight for our existence, and we shall survive. That was the voice of South Africa's Prime Minister Hendrik Verbort, shortly before he came close to death. A cattle show at the Union Exposition in Johannesburg caught his interest, and he returned to the stands to watch the prize animals march by. Despite unrest in the country, all seemed peaceful here. Then suddenly gunshots and confusion. A would-be assassin is hauled off, and the Prime Minister clutches his wounded head. He is hit by two 22 caliber bullets fired at close range by a wealthy cattle farmer who was an official at the fair. Vervoort is still alive. Quickly help his mustard to get into a hospital. The gunman, David Pratt, seems to have been affected by a combination of personal problems and South Africa's explosive atmosphere.
because Dr. Hendrik Firwood was an immoral man, I decided to stab him, and I killed him, and I killed him, and I killed him. Hier die was um, Dr. Verwurz een verschoenlijke wapen. Dat hij mij omgehoord heeft. Voor dat was een foto van Dr. Verwurz. En dan hier is die vier wapen van David Pret. Ook probeer het om dokter vervoerd te vervoeren. En dan hier het ons die, die dook. Waarmee je uh, zo fijn als dokter vervoerd vermoord het. Daar kan je zien is nog steeds van die bloedspatsels op die, me op die dook. De hele population van South Afrika has been shocked to the depth of its soul by the tragedy that unfolded itself in the House of Assembly this afternoon. It is my sad duty to express on behalf of all the tremendous sense of loss which overwhelms us all on this tragic day. A cedar of the Lebanon has fallen. The man whose master hand safely steered our ship of state for the past eight years is no more. Strangely enough, nobody spoke about him at all for years. I mean, until the, it, it was all resuscitated by the, the appearance of the Conservative Party, who then used to talk with, in glowing terms about Favod and how South Africa would have been, you know, so much better a place if Favod had been still the Prime Minister. The rest of us, I think, were only too glad to forget he ever existed. Dr. Hendrik Verfoot, South African Premier, had been assassinated. At South Africa House in London, people gathered. The man they call the chief architect of apartheid was dead, stabbed to death as he sat in Parliament. White and coloured alike deplored the bloody violence. From all over the world, messages of sympathy and regret were sent to the bereaved nation, which had lost its leader two days before his 65th birthday. In Rhodesia, Mr Smith adjourned Parliament as a mark of respect. Though forceful in his policies, Fairfoot was a retiring man who seldom attended public functions. Many said he was living on borrowed time, for it was at Johannesburg Agricultural Show six years ago that he cheated death in one of the most dramatic assassination attempts in history. Though twice shot in the head, he miraculously recovered. This time, fate was against him. While bells rang in the background to assemble members of parliament, a messenger approached Dr. Fairfoot as he sat at his desk. Without warning, the man plunged a knife into the Prime Minister's neck and chest. Minutes later, Dr. Fairfoot was dead. A city that only hours before had been stunned by the assassination of Premier Fairfoot was remarkably calm. While newspapers blazed headlines of the murder news, people in the metropolis went about their normal business. But as they looked at press pictures of their dead leader, uppermost in their thoughts was the question, who will be the next Prime Minister? At the Groot Schur, the Prime Minister's residence, all was silent, for at this moment in Pretoria, Dr. Fairfoot, the man who gave meaning to the word apartheid, was going to his last resting place. Even as Mrs. Verfurt arrived at Union Buildings for the funeral service, it was already clear in the minds of many that the dead Premier's successor would be John Forster. Like the man here being mourned, the new Premier believes in the doctrine of apartheid. Op dinsdag 6 september 1966 is dat vervoerd door Zafinda's vermoor in het parlement. 
uh, my pa was een parlementslid, wat skuins achter vir woord gesit het in die parlement, en gesien het precies wat gebeur het, en my ma was toevallig in die gerei, my ma Suzanne Mulder in die galerij geweest, want op daar betrokken dag sy vir woord een belangrike aankondiging gedoen het oor skakeling met Afrika, want die vorige dag het hy met die premier van Lesotho, Leboa Jonathan, een gesprek gevoer. Dat staan die premier het met die Afrikaanse luchtmaak vliegtuig gaan haal in Lesotho en gevlieg kaap toe, waar die twee leiders dan een gesprek gevoer het met elkaar oor verhouding en so meer. Nou voor die kontraat uiteindelijk die klokke luis is in die parlement altyd, en vir woord het in sy dank gesit, terwyl die klokke nog geluid het, die bodes soos altyd beweeg rond die parlement, maar alle bodes mag nie in die volksraad self gekom het nie, hulle beschrijf in die gange. Vervendas is aangestel baie kort van tevore, as die bode wat in die gange moet beweeg nie, uiteindelik in die volksraad self nie. Die sekuriteit was nou baie swak in daardie tyd, en Safendas het ingekom, en na verwoord toe gestap, en verwoord het sy hand uitgesteek, gedinkt het bring een briefje vorm, terwyl die klokke nog lui. En die volgende moet het Safendas boop om geval basis, en met die dolk om begin steek in die boors, en mens het eerst nie besef wat gebeur het nie. My maase weergave, sy kon nie verstaan, hoekom die bode met die vuis op verwoed sy boor sla nie, want dit is sy van boe af gesien. Daarna is die vendas gegryp, gearresteer daar so, jylle gedoente en weggeneem, en verwoed is verweiwe na die hospitaal toe, maar die aanduidings was dat hy omtrent om hulle dood was. Die interessante van die vendas net is, dat hy het nog een keer aansoek gedoen, van 1935 af, om in Zuid-Afrika te kan bly, en al die keer is hy afgekeer, hy is een Griek eindelijk, van Kreta af, wat in Egypte gebleid het, en later in Mozambiek lang was. Uiteindelijk het die land al onwettig ingekom, en op die 9 augustus, in die 66, dat is een maand voor die tijd, die die minister van Belangszake opdracht het teken, dat hy gedeporteer moet word. Maar die verslag het geleer op die tafel van ambtenaar, waar het op die 6e september nog nie geteken het nie, so die opdracht het nog nie werking gebreen nie. Die parlement in Tussen het nie gecontroleer, wie is die persoek op die persoon nie, en was maar te dankbaar om jonger mense te kry om daar te werk, en hy is aangesteld sonder sekuriteitsklaring, wat achterna groot gelinge laat gaan, en al kante toe gaan het. Ek denk dat het in grijpende implikaties gehad op Millik in Zuid-Afrika, en die interessante is, as jy in die handwerk gaan kyk, dan staan daar net eindelijk die parlement verdaag, waar hy betrokke dag, en dan later, dan staan daar net die aankondiging in, sien ek die, die eerste minister is doodverklaar in elk geval, en dit is alweer die handwerk weergeef, wat iets wat dramatisch het Afrika's geschiedenis in die richting gestuur het. Wat toch een beetje skokkend was, as mys in die parlement gekom het, en ek het nie in 88 in die parlement gekom, was die mat, een stuk mat het gewees, is die hele volkstraatse groen mat, speciaal gewees, met sekere strepe op ens met volkstraditie, en ek aanvaar die bloedkool langs uit by bank, kon nie uitgehaal word, hoe lidig die mat uit die mat uit nie. So daar is een klein maaikie wat boop geleed het eindelijk, en dit was nog nie die 94 daarna, jy die maaikie nog daar geleed, as jy nou een stap kan sien, is die bank waar hy gesit het, en langs aan die maaikie gewees. En tussen weet ek het die ANC wel die hele mat vervang, en is dit nou nie meer daar nie, is die nieuwe mat wat ingesit is die hele eindelijk, maar dit was altyd toch bykie aangrijpend om te sien, die slikkie mat wat boor die bloedkool is, veel jare na die voorval in die 66. In Pretoria, Dr. Fairfoot, the man who gave meaning to the word apartheid, was going to his last resting place. Even as Mrs. Fairfoot arrived at Union Buildings for the funeral service, it was already clear in the minds of many that the dead Premier's successor would be John Forster. Like the man here being mourned, the new Premier believes in the doctrine of apartheid.